بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق وعز المرسلين أبي القاسم محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين Nowadays we have so many wrong propaganda and we have little of so-called Muslims groups that people are using as an excuse or evidence to prove that Islam does not coexist or it cannot coexist with others. Definitely we blame certain fatawas, certain ideas and maybe the certain media are taken advantages out of it. But I cannot judge a big, strong, magnificent, precious ideology, doctrine, constitution, salvation, for humanity, like Islam, because of certain minor acts or because of exceptions. When you want to talk about Islam and say whether Islam coexists with others or not, you cannot just pick certain exceptions and based on that exceptions you say, oh, it's, therefore Islam does not exist. Why? We see blood uh, shedding, uh, the, uh, you know, they, they shed the blood, let's say, in Iraq, in Syria, in Lebanon, in certain places in Africa. Therefore, Islam no good. Well, we are talking about more than one billion Muslims. One billion Muslims. You are talking about a huge number in the humanity. They say among five people, on earth, one of them is a, is a Muslim. So if let's say 1%, 2%, 10% were bad, what about the other 90%? Why you are, how come when it comes to Islam, you start stereotyping and you do not look after the fact and you do not seek the proper resources? Why you wanna pick unknown books or unknown resources and accuse me out of it. Let's go back to Quran. Let's go back to the uh, Prophet's tradition. Let's go back to Ahlul Bayt Let's go back to the to certain uh, resources that the Muslims in general agreed upon, uh, upon, the, uh, upon them. And then start criticizing me. You cannot just be naive and accuse me because you are fanatic, because you are ignorant, because you do not know what's going on in this world. You hear a couple reports, you watch a couple media reports, you read a couple articles, you did a couple searches on your search engine and you came up with a conclusion, start accusing people and spreading the bad words and that bad message about a huge religion like Islam. This is definitely not accepted. Let's go now and see what does the Quran say about coexistence. And we want to show how Islam, from a theoretical point of view, from a belief point of view, and from a practical point of view, how it dealt with others. If I take a look at the Muslims' religion, which we call it Islam, let's see how it started, as we talked about it before. While the others were fighting the Muslims, the Muslims by the order of the Prophet, and because of their good nature, they did not fight back for 10 years. They looted their 
belongs. They boycott them. They made them st starve for three years in certain areas like Shab Abi Talib. They killed them, murdered them, hurt them, punished them like what happened to Bilal, the companion of the Prophet, when they punished him on the desert because he believed in one God and none of the Sahaba went and killed those who hurt him. We did not hear that the Prophet said, go kill those people because they are punishing my companions. The message was peace. The message was think in a rational way. The message was analyze my new religion to you, you the pagans. The message was look how good we are, look how we behave, look how we react. The message was we are human beings and we are brothers when it comes to humanity. We share the same resources. If we differ, let's come and talk about it. Let's have debates. Let's argue. Let's have our own dialogues. But forget about the sword. Forget about the weapon. Forget about killing. Forget about hurting others. Forget about punishing others. They punished Bilal. He was from Africa. He was a slave. What did the Prophet did? They paid money for him to free him. And he did not tell him, go and kill those who punished you. Never ever. When it comes to the uncle of the Prophet ﷺ, Hamza, they killed Hamza in a very horrible way. And then the person, the individual that killed Hamza came to the Prophet. He said, La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah. What did the Prophet do? He said, you are a liar, hypocrite? No. He said, go, I don't want to see your face. He did not tell him, hey, it's the time, I'm strong, I have to get rid of you. This is why Islam said, the Prophet is a mercy for humanity. Rahma. للعالمين. This is from Quran. رحمة للعالمين. And also how he trained his people. They were plotting against him to kill him in Medina. In Mecca. Mecca, the town of the Prophet. The home of the Prophet. His people, because they are afraid of his message because it's gonna ruin their trivial worshiping to worship pagan to worship idols what's so good about it it's gonna threaten their economy it's gonna threaten their prestige it's gonna ruin their so-called empire or social benefits what did the Prophet do when they plot against him in Mecca? Ibrahim came and he told Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, those people are plotting against you. What did he do? He called Ali Alayhi Salam and he told him, you sleep in my bed so they might think I'm still sleeping. And he fled to Medina, what we call it nowadays, Medina. Did he order Ali alayhi salam to kill all those entering his house? No, never happened. The message was still to be peaceful. This is like 10 years of stress, 10 years of problems, 10 years of punishment, 10 years of so many issues against the prophets 
followers and against the Prophet himself and the Prophet was وَجَاهِدْهُمْ بِهِ جِهَادًا كَبِيرًا Make jihad by word using the Quran argue them with the Quran the jihad is using the words of the Quran وَجَاهِدْهُمْ بِهِ that means make jihad using this Quran the rational thinking in this Quran the beauty of this Quran, the spiritual dimension in this Quran. This is what, how the Prophet approached his enemy. What well, about others then? Definitely is more merciful. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ You are the mercy to humanity, to this earth by all means so he left Mecca he went to Al-Madina and even though they were attacking him he ordered Ali alayhi salam to give his enemy their money back because he is Al-Amin the Prophet is the trustworthy He's a trustworthy person, even with, with his enemy. Okay, this is another example. Even when they punished before that, when they punished the family of Ammar, the first two Muslims were killed in Islam, the parents of Ammar bin Yasser. What did he do? Did he tell Ammar, go kill them at night, plot against them and kill them? in a very secret, no, that's not our way. Even Ammar was watching his parents punished and suffering by the enemy of Islam, Quraysh. And they forced Ammar to say he believes in the idols. So he said it and he was survived. But what happened to his parents? They were killed. Was the order to go start killing who are killing us? Some people, they are very philosophical in a sarcastic way here because philosophy is about rational thinking. They might say, oh, yeah, because Muhammad and his followers, peace be upon him, was weak. That's why he was nice with others. But when he was strong, he started killing people left and right. This is not right. This is your illusion. This is another wrong propaganda. This is a very, un, very subjective understanding of Islam and very dangerous way of analyzing history and very unprofessional. Because history proved to us when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with his great army went to Mecca back again, the place that kicked him out in the past, when he was strong and was way much stronger than his enemy, and his enemy were way more significant than others, he came to Mecca and he ordered Ali alayhi salam to have his merciful, merciful slogan, slogan, today is the day of mercy. And those who used to punish Muhammad sallallahu and his followers, they considered some of their houses a safe place. He said, Man dakhala bayt Aba Sufyan kana aminan. Abu Sufyan used to hurt the Prophet Allah. Yet if you enter his house, you are safe. If you stay in your house, you are safe. This is Islam. So he did not revenge. The only thing, he used the power when he entered Al Kaaba and he destroyed the idols because it does not belong to what Abraham has had built before. And it was a trivial way to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the only way. In his Climax, when it comes to power, authority, leadership, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa 
the mercy of God did not revenge back. So your analyzing is wrong. You might, you might find a source here and there about something you dislike or something might does not fit what I'm talking about, but I don't care about it because I go with the major behave and the rest has to be questioned. This is the way the prophet used to live. This is huge history. 99% this is the life of the Prophet وسلم, and the way he acted in the society. You bring me as 1% and you want to contradict what I'm talking about? That's one thing. Secondly, let's see the, the Quran, the message. You said the message is, it does not make me coexist with others. Well, I said that's what the Prophet وسلم, did and a proof of coexistence when he had the Medina, he had the truce with the Jews, the Christian has the right to have their churches, the Muslims are allowed to get married with the Christian, they are allowed married to, they are allowed to get married with the Jews, they are allowed to, even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to, used to um, have the Christians, like Nasara Najran, come to his mosque and argue with him about Islam and the concept of this religion. And when, the, when their prayers was closed, what did the Prophet tell them? Get out of my mosque, get out of our temple. They prayed, they practiced their rituals in the mosque of the Prophet Sallallahu And no one was allowed to hear them. This is coexistence. And when we read in Quran, when Ahadan, if someone from Al Mushrikeen, disbeliever, disbeliever, he's a disbeliever. Among the disbelievers, a person came. When Ahadan min Al Mushrikeen, astajarak, ask for a refuge, Muhammad. He is a disbeliever, and there is a battlefield even, and he is disobeying the laws, and he is plotting against Islam, and yet he said, you know what? I ask for, for, your forgive, for your refuge, not forgiveness, refuge. Granted, grant me peace. Grant me an asylum. The Prophet, shelter. Do you protect me? And I'm a disbeliever, what was the answer? فَأَجِرْهُ That means take care of him. Answer his call. Protect him. Though he is what? A disbeliever. وَأَسْمِعْهُ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ And make him know about the real image, the real doctrine. That's it. It's a disbeliever. And he used to fight you. And he used to be against you. But once he said, I'm peaceful, then give him the chance to understand this religion. Hatta yasma'a kalam Allah. So this is Islam. When ahadun min al mushrikeen astajaraka fa'ajirhu hatta yasma'a. This is the ayah. This is from the Quran. We are not inventing it. We are not inventing a new history. We are not going back to history and changing our books, giving you new additions. Islam has been this way. And this is our Quran, and this is our heritage. So why you want to twist the message? Then when it comes to real examples, other than the time of the Prophet let's see what the followers of Muslims did. The Khulafa used to have scientists, sometimes Christians, Jewish. Islam was, had a very big slogan. According to some narrations, even if you want to go to China, go search for knowledge. That's another sign of coexistence. As Imam Ali mentioned, the people are two kinds. It's either a brother because of because he is sharing the same faith with you, the same belief. He is a human fellow. Take care of him. This is 
a good sign of coexistence. And look at the Muslims' geographical places. We still see churches so old from the time, maybe like 1,000 years old and more. In Lebanon, in Syria, in Palestine, in Iraq. That's it. I have to respect it. In Palestine, churches from the time, like a couple hundred years after Jesus' birth, peace be upon him, still existing. While some extremist, Jewish extremist, they might destroy it as they did with others. You go to the Jerusalem, you can see the church here and the mosque here. Very old church. No one destroyed it. No one. You are not allowed to. We, as a sign of coexistence, we say that we respect the people of the book, the Christians and the Jews. While we do not see that in their Bible, we respect the Bible because we believe in God and we believe in respecting the word of God. While to them Quran is written by Muhammad That's another sign of coexistence. Show me how do you coexist with Muslims? How do you coexist with others? Show me how did you coexist in Europe? Show me how did the Catholic coexist in, with the Protestant? Show me how the churches coexisted before between the Crusaders and others. Well, things happen, but not because of the ideology. That's my point. The ideology, the Quran, the Islamic heritage, the tradition of the Prophet, the tradition of Ahl al-Bayt all this was very clear that you have to be open to others. You have to argue and talk and debate and have a dialogue. Even Al-Imam Ali alayhi salam, this is another internal example. In the time of Al-Khawarij, like and nowadays problems. We have ISIS, we have whatever you want to call it, ISIS, ISIL. All these people are killing, you know, innocent Muslims and the Christian in Middle East nowadays in 2014. They are killing Muslims and they are killing Christians. You go to certain media, what they say, oh, you know, Muslims are killing Christians. Oh, they are killing American journalists because they are Christians. No, these people, they are killing. Everyone does not believe in what they believe. They are only, they consider themselves the only divine group and the rest going to hellfire. Even the Muslims, they have been tortured and killed. And that happened even during the beginning of Islam and the period of Al-Imam Ali alayhi salam. A group we call it Al-Khawarij. They used to think that they are the only right group and the rest are going to hellfire. The good lesson we learned that Islam in the beginning gave them the freedom of the speech, as we call it nowadays. They used to threat the Imam the Khalifa, the leader. They used to talk about him in a bad way. They used to do so many weird rituals, believe in very weird ways. Yet, Al-Imam made it clear to them, as long as you do not hurt Muslims, you do not bring hurt to the Islamic nation, believe in whatever you want to believe in. We argue with you with our strong evidence. We argue with you with the Quran, rational thinking, tradition, the authenticated tradition of the Prophet But when they start killing Muslims, Imam Ali السلام, starting, start fighting them. They killed even the Imam, the leader of the Muslims. You tell me how come a religion like Islam can generate such kind of groups? Islam is not generating those groups. Those groups, they are twisting Islam to build their own concepts. And that's why Islam make a safe net. 
When you want to understand Islam, you do not understand it from any guy. You do not just do a Google stuff and consider it Islam. You do not just buy any book and consider it Quran. Make sure it is the authenticated one. Because some people nowadays, they are having new, their own version. They call it Al-Furqan over the internet. No, you come to the authenticated resources and you have to rationalize the stuff. This is how to protect Islam. The safe net is what? You take Islam from the Prophet and Ahl al-Bayt. Ahl al-Bayt stayed with Muslims about 300 years. Al-Imam Ali after the Prophet Muhammad, the Prophet did not just leave it loose. He assigned certain peoples to make sure Muslims are following the right understanding of Islam. So no one will explain an ayah in a wrong way. So he assigned Imam Ali, and then Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein, Imam Zain al Abidin, and Imam al Baqir about 300 years. Those people, 300 years living with people, living with the challenges, living with the challenges coming from other civilizations to prove to us the real, true identity and to keep the true identity of Islam. That was the first safety net. The second one is what? Is the behavior of the general Muslims. Among all these years, we never had such kind of ideology. All of a sudden you come and you want to teach us the true image of Islam. All those billions of Muslims, they say no and you say yes, definitely this is questionable. Among 1400 years, we were going this way. All of a sudden you are bringing us with the new ideas and new beliefs, and you tell us I'm right and you guys are wrong, this is another questionable thing. The third safety net is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to be united and anything that ruined this unity, it's not Islamic. Even in the time of Al-Imam Ali alayhi salam, when we say Al-Imam Ali was the most important, successful, legitimate Khalifa after the Prophet, Yet, when someone else was assigned, what did he do? Did he fight to get that position? No. He said, لا أسلمن ما سلمت أمور المسلمين لا أسلمن ما سلمت أمور المسلمين As long as the Muslims are good and living in peace, there is no need to object and to create troubles and hurt others. Those are certain examples of coexistence. And another way which we might talk about it later on is the flexibility of the legislation, the legislation in Islam. This is another sign of coexistence. The flexibility of the legislation and then the message is a global message that has answers for every issue that you might face. And the third one, that Islam is the solution and it's a job to help you and to protect you, support you, not to make you a slave to its rituals. We stop at this point.